Excellent. All right. So uh, today we're going to ha be having a conversation for Nurses Week around uh, creativity. The last three uh, videos we did really um, on kind of the problem side of the equation as far as uh, burnout in nursing and the issues that surround burnout and how that impacts nurses. And so the next four um, sessions, some videos, we're going to be talking about the sort of the solution side of the equation. And so I'm just going to ask Allison to go ahead and introduce herself quickly. Um, I'm Nesaret. I am uh, the creator of this channel. And I'm also a psychiatric nurse um, with 17 years experience. And now I have transitioned into uh, providing holistic care as a coach and consultant. And um, I love this conversation about nurses because um, I know this is an area that impacts nurses greatly, all nurses and also healthcare professionals as well. Um, so if you're here, we appreciate you. And um, we're going to talk about creativity, but I'll have Allison go ahead and introduce yourself and we'll get going. Perfect. So my name is Allison Tweedby, and of some things that you can say I am or have been, um, I am currently a nurse. I'm an RN and have been for almost 10 years. I am not as specialized as Nezaret. She blows me away. I have had a lot of experience in a lot of different areas. So um, hospital, hospice administration. Yeah, I've done a little bit of the gauntlet of nursing. And I am also a breathwork facilitator. But I will tell you that first and foremost, what I have always been and what I will always be is a creative. And it has really been the source of happiness in my life. It never ends. And there are just times when it is on like supernova. <laughs> and then there's other times where it is just my normal creativity. But creativity is something that has always followed me and um, like deeply deeply. You can ask anyone who actually knows me and they would say that probably I am one of the most creative people that they know, which cracks me up, but we can go into that later. So nice to see you today, Nazareth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, and I love what you said about always being a creative. Um, and I think when I think about creativity, I I feel that we each have that especially when we're children. And then I think people kind of lose it. I know I have noticed something as I was growing up. I'm even now I am too serious, like most of the time. And I wish I could just be a little bit more kind of relaxed into that creativity. So can you say a little bit about that in terms of like how people kind of uh, have that within them, but as they get older, maybe people kind of lose a little bit of that. Oh, absolutely. This is actually so exciting for me because I love to talk about this subject, about the subject when people are like, oh, I'm not really creative. I'm like, bullshit. Sorry, excuse the French. But yes, you were correct. As a child, you probably, you say you probably were creative. I want to tell you that you were absolutely creative. And I will tell you that that has never ended. We were born to create. Creativity is part of our natural state, just it as happiness and peace is part of our natural state. We are the ones that cloud that. We are the ones that decide that either by listening to other people and then consequently listening to background thoughts. Hey, they may be forefront thoughts, right? But I want to tell you that everyone is creative. Here is part of the problem, though, is that people look at creativity and think it's this. It's in a box that, well, if you're a painter or a writer or a, um, an artist or a singer or, you know what I mean, those kinds of things, that then you're creative. Oh, my gosh. Creativity spans eons. Creativity, there are no boundaries. Creativity, creativity is limitless. 
So it is only us that put limits on creativity. It can look like anything. It can absolutely mm-hmm. look like anything. Um, I seriously, creativity can be something like you're a creative hiker. You've found different ways of doing things, different shoes to wear, different things that eat to eat along the way that makes it work for you. And I used to run marathons too. And, um, you could, I would dare say that there are tons of creative people who are running. They've found, Mm -hmm. they've had to be creative in, in how they carry their food. They've had to be creative in, you know, where do they, where do they stop? What works for them this way and that way? It doesn't, it, you can be creative in the way you cook. You can be creative in the way you dress. You can be creative in any way, shape or form. It's just how you define creativity, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, yeah. I will have to say that some of my creativity would be your basic definitions of creativity, right? I, um, I draw, I write, I paint, um, those kinds of things. I sew, I'm a quilter, you know, things like that. I play the cello. So, but I also have so many other things that I am creative in. I feel Mm -hmm. I'm very creative. I did Mm -hmm. hair for 20 years before I became a nurse. Right. And I would dare say that that is, that was one of my heights of creativity was doing hair, let alone even my own hair, people, um, with it being short, people think that short hair can only be done one way. Right. But I will tell you, it's funny because anyone I've ever worked with, anyone I've ever dated, they are always saying, Oh my gosh, it's just like every day I'm waiting to see how you've done your hair. You know, those kinds of things that Mm -hmm. in and of itself is creativity. So it's looking outside the box of what we have told ourselves creativity looks like, or what somebody else has told us that creativity looks like, but creativity seriously has saved my life many times. It is often where I de-stress and not only that, but the things that I create bring me great joy. Um, Not always in the first estate. (laughs) So like with my painting, I'm like, Oh, I, I have been one to um, self-deprecate when it comes to creativity. One, I found I used to do it to not make others feel bad because they're like, oh, I'm not creative. Oh my gosh, you're so creative. You know, and it it was almost (laughs) like it made them feel bad that I was creative. So I would self-deprecate so that they wouldn't feel as bad. You know, oh no, it was just, you know, blah, blah, blah. really downplay anything. But I really learned just in the last, just in the last little while that me loving what I do, whether it not looks great to somebody else is important. Mm -hmm. And it's still a struggle for me sometimes to say I'm a painter or I'm a writer. Yeah. I have like five books written (laughs) yet to be published. They're going to get published. And then I've started illustrating them because, um, I don't have an agent and, and I haven't gone down that road. So I thought, well, maybe I can illustrate them too. You know, that's sort of the thing I I've done poor painting, which is abstract painting, not necessarily painting for a a children's book, but I thought, well, when I sold my house and all my belongings, I sold my paint studio as well. I either gave away or sold all that I had in my paint studio because doing acrylic paint pours are, um, they're not easy to trek around, right? All of the, all of the stuff that you have to have. So instead I thought I'd give a go with watercolors, totally different medium, totally different, you know, and it still may not be traditionally how you use watercolor. <laughs> mm. I don't even know. Um, And my watercolors don't look like other people's watercolors. And I use them coupled with, um, what are they called? Colored pencils and those kinds of things. I just, but, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. I can do things like um, with watercolors that I couldn't do with acrylic pores. And Mm -hmm. um, I'll often just paint a little picture kind of like a postcard and write a note on the back of it and send it to somebody that I get the inclination maybe could use it that day 
Mm. Um, so those kinds of things, but creativity is so far out of the box that we put it in. That's just what yeah. I basically. It, like. Yeah, it reminds me of a book that I read once called Mastery by Robert Greene, which mm. basically um, kind of s- s- says similar things to what you're saying. That he says people think that you know talent and creativity is a genius and it belongs to just the certain people like you said the famous people or the ones that are that have mastered something but that's actually not the case he goes through each of these individuals who have done amazing things in each of the area of their expertise whether it's a basketball player or an artist or a writer and he shows into sort of like what they did to create those things. And usually it's just the love and the passion that they have for it. And they've done it longer than anybody else. And they've devoted to that craft and that, you know, devotion that they had for their path of creativity and, and creating. So that's what makes them different. It's not that they're different than us or our ability to create, like you're saying, we all have the ability to create and to be creative and even in our everyday life, like you're describing. And so um, I love that essentially the message is like what you're saying is creativity belongs to everyone. We have the capacity to be creative and to create <laughs> like, you know, everyone has that. Um, so then I guess that my next question would be sort of how that applies into the nursing profession and in terms of burnout and or just create how do nurses implement this to be able to cope with burnout or like or take care of themselves and not go into burnout or come out of burnout whichever um yeah how do we kind of relate that to nurses okay So first of all, I wanted to tell you what you said is spot on Mm -hmm. and I wanted to add to it. And we don't have to dedicate ourselves to one thing and become a master. I'm a master Mm -hmm. at nothing. I'm a master at being me, (laughs) but just know that if you start down a creative venture, you don't have to start down that road to be a master. You can just dip your foot in the water, right? Just Mm -hmm. a toe if you want. Um, and I actually, with a friend of mine, who's a physician, her and I, we no longer live in the same state, but I had this idea and I thought she she would, um, um, agree with me too. And she did, but we didn't end up making it happen. It still may happen, but we wanted to create a venture where we had this huge warehouse that we had different things in there, um, for people to try, like they could get a, um, what is it called? A membership to, you know, like you go to a gym, but a membership to a creativity spot. And I know that they have similar things like it. This has been an idea in my head for probably 10 years. Um, and, but you need backing, you need somebody, you know, you need the building, you need the backing, but anyway, um, so that if somebody was interested in painting, they had a paint studio, paint studio where you didn't have to afford all of that stuff to try something out to see if you liked it or not. And then you spent all of that money. Um, and I just thought how fun that would be. And also people who live like in, in apartments that don't have space for all of their craft, but would love to do their craft. They had open space where they could rent that space and do that or teach a class themselves. And there would be classes offered. I just think that we need more creative centers. We need more creative options for people And I have seen it here and there, bits and pieces. Um, But I think we also need to light that fire, that creative fire. It was funny. I listened to, um, it was a TikTok. And um, the background, I was watching a paint pour is what I was Mm -hmm. watching. But the background was about um, a man um, and his daughter was talking to him. And she says, what is it that you do, daddy? And he says, well, I teach. And she's like, well, what do you teach? And she says, I teach art. I teach people um, how to draw and she laughed and she says, but did they forget? I mean, the simplicity of a child, right? They all know they have that ability. It's us as we grow up, somebody else has told us something, somebody didn't like what we drew 
and those things we internalize. But anyway, for nurses, so this can be creativity can be used in a myriad of way for, ways for nurses. So let's mm -hmm. first talk about creativity before we even talk about burnout. Let's talk about creativity as a nurse mm -hmm. that can maybe even help prevent burnout. Yeah, is being creative in the way that we go about life. Um, I know that for myself, I found myself, it was like kind of a drudgery, right? You worked and you were home. You worked and you were home. There were like these two options. Um, but I now know that there are so many other options than that. And that could have probably saved me from burnout. It could have at least extended the amount of time okay. between um, burnout, right? Uh, but how are we going about being creative? We're like, oh, we don't have enough time to do these, these um, health practices. We don't have enough time to do this. We don't, that is, that is the big farce is time, right? Mm -hmm. Time mm -hmm. is a construct of man. And we actually are able to bend time. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily something you can, you consciously do. It's at least not something I necessarily have learned how to do consciously. Mm -hmm. But if you've ever been in a creative project, have you found how time can either stand still or it can fly how it can change like in the blink of almost, almost in the blink of an eye or also the other way I look at it is like there is so much you can do within a given period of time like as a nurse, usually like I found that I had to be creative to make sure that my schedule matches with the patients and the families and other colleagues and like you can use the same amount of time even within a project or like in what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life or your work to use time in a way that is more efficient. You can always kind of like ex like tweak it so that your efficiency is higher with the same work amount smarter, of time. smarter, yeah. not harder. Yeah. Honestly. And or that's all I did people... before was working hard. <laughs> yeah. And and you can look at this in even in everyday life, as in some people accomplish so much within a span of time, whatever that time is, and other people right. don't. So what makes the difference? Yeah. For sure. What makes a difference is actually tuning in, mm -hmm. right? Tuning mm -hmm. in to that channel. I think often we're trying to swim upstream or trying, we're in a canoe trying to go against the current. Mm -hmm. Instead, we need to turn the tip of our boat enough so that the current starts pushing us downstream, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. We're pushing so yeah. hard against things that all we need to do is let go of a little bit of control mm -hmm. and turn the tip of the boat. Because there are ways in, in your... And I can't speak to every um, entity of nursing because every, every, you know, when you work in the hospital is different than when you work um, at a home in home care or when you work in administration or whatever, but learn to work smarter instead of harder, learn to use your creative powers, your creative prowess. Honestly, guys, our, we have so much power in creativity and we don't even scratch the surface. So look for create creative ways to be more efficient in your job, be more efficient in your work. That will honestly save you stress, strain, angst, and you will better serve your patients, let alone yourself in doing so and, and your colleagues. It doesn't matter. Um, I know that in the hospital, one of my, so I'm a nurse, but I'm also a CNA, right? Because mm -hmm. every nurse has to go through CNA school as well. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing is, um, I'll be honest, I'm glad I'm not a full-time CNA. I am glad that is just a lot of hard work. And my CNAs were essential to me, right? They saved me time. But when I had time, I helped my CNAs because that um, relationship between myself and my CNA or mm -hmm. CNAs was essential to me being able to optimize my time. If I could find a space and time where I could help them, they were more willing to help me. 
And I treated them with the utmost of respect because I do have the utmost of respect for my CNAs because mm -hmm. they are doing things that honestly, I don't want to do myself, but I have other things that I need to do with the level of my license, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that anything that they are doing is less than what I am per se. It is mm -hmm. all essential. But that I think re um, relies a bit on creativity as well. Creatively doing your job, but using, not using, enabling others to help you. I think mm -hmm. as nurses, we tend to be hyper independent, thinking that we need to do everything ourselves. I don't know. Do you feel that same way? Well, the, it's interesting because um, what you're saying about creativity and nursing is that or even in a general sense, that it requires flexibility. Creativity requires you to be flexible. And something that I've noticed in nursing is that, like you said, we tend to be very independent and we want to do things by the book and kind of follow the rules and it has to be done this way. But the delegation, you're talking about like um, licensed practical nurses, right? Um, it's even being able to collaborate and delegate and work together and support other people in their job too. So that requires flexibility. Um, it does. Yeah. No more rigidity. Yeah. So I, I want to just, I love that. I love how you put that. It reminded me mm -hmm. of um, when we talked, so I did a podcast um, on resilience. And one of the things that I talked about was the fact that resilience does not always mean being it doesn't often mean being rigid. It often means being flexible. And it's just like if you've ever um, gone up a canyon where they have, you know, canyons have lots of strong winds. If you will look down a canyon, you will see trees. Well, at least where I, I'm from, there would be mm -hmm. trees and all of the trees would be bent to the way the wind blew down the canyon, right? So now I want to take that and realize that, okay, the reason that those trees are there is because they were willing to be flexible. Mm -hmm. If those trees had been too rigid, they would have been uprooted. They would not be there. We too need to realize where we can be flexible. It doesn't mean that, oh, I, I'm going to be flexible in giving this patient this amount as opposed to this amount. No, I'm not talking about those things. But it does require flexibility in being able to work with one another and being able to be a team and being able to be um, in, in working as a unit. Mm -hmm. This is another thing, you know, I want to talk about is that we as nurses, I, I always remember going through nursing school and they're like, oh, well, nurses eat their young. It, and sad enough, it's true. I really believe that if we can learn to be creative enough and be flexible enough to work as a team, we will see so much more happen. Not just so much more happen in our own lives, which will happen, but in the lives of our patients and in nursing in general. I really think that we need to start looking outside the box. Let's screw boxes. We no longer have boxes, right? But um, so creativity can be used I think in a beautiful way in that sense, excuse me. Um, also creativity can be used as a de-stressor. Um, finding, I <laughs> here's something. So often as nurses, we are so worn out by the time we're done with our shift that there's no more bandwidth left to think to feel, to do whatever. It, we're almost like zombies when we go home, right? Yeah. 12 because hour it takes shift. a lot out of us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 12 hours It takes a lot yeah. out of us, emotionally, physically, mentally. Um, but I will tell you a way that you can start filling your cup again yeah. is by beginning to listen to you. We we are so busy listening to everything outside of ourselves, we forget to listen to ourselves. And this is part of that self-care, right? Sitting with yourself. I don't care if you don't like to meditate, you don't have to meditate. 
But that's another thing. You're looking at meditation as one thing. Meditation can be a myriad of things, right? Mm -hmm. So sitting and listening to yourself, I believe that is meditation. That is self-love. That is self-care. How do I feel right now? And what makes me happy? What lights me up? What what makes me go zing? I mean, there are so many things I can be like, oh my gosh, I so want to do this. I have a list. I really do. I have a list of things I haven't done that I still want to do. Things like I want to learn how to blow glass. I want to learn how learn how to do stained glass. I want to learn how to throw a pot, you know, do pottery. I want, mm-hmm. it's, it's endless. And I said, the problem with mine is often it just, it, it's a constant will. And so, yeah, I don't generally get to be, I don't choose to be a master of something because I want to try so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's okay with me. And there are other people who want to be that master that's in their personality. That's who they are. They want to learn everything about this one subject. And me, I'm like, oh, I want some of this. I want, I, I'm like the, the, the squirrel mode. Right. But, um, learning yourself, learning to listen your, to yourself, learning yourself and say, what is it I want to do? Most people you ask that, what lights you up? They'll be like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's reading a book. That's totally legit. Maybe it's painting. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's getting a massage. Maybe it's taking a nap. Maybe I it's like all of those husband. actually. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. Mine is like reading, writing. I love massages. I love nature walks. Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Like yoga, um, meditation for sure. But and and the other piece, though, I think for a lot of nurses or for a lot of us, even for you, nursing is our passion also. And that is an area that we pour ourselves into and master. Like it requires that. So then this other stuff, everything else is sort of like brings a little bit of levity and kind of fun. And like you said, creativity and Light just like up. a contrast yeah, to the, the devotion and passion and all that stuff that we pour into our profession and, and our work. You know, yeah. I love that you point that out, that that is part of our, our passion is, is caring for others, yeah. right? Caring for people. And we can use our creativity in that because caring can mean so many different things. I still believe that one of the reasons I went into nursing or I was led to nursing one is I am, it is who I am. I'm a caregiver. I, I, I love people. I want to help heal. I want them to get better. I want them to live lives of, of luster. I want them to love life. I want them to feel the sun shining on them, but it all doesn't look the same for everybody. And although I'm a nurse and I am currently working as a nurse, I, my biggest passion is I want to help nurses. Mm -hmm. I feel that I can do so much more to heal patients by helping nurses. Does that make sense? And that is where I'm putting a lot of my creativity in, um, in that area. But I love that. I love that. Yes, because that is, that is who we are. But yes, this other, it, this other, it lightens us up. We tend to get heavy. Mm -hmm. And like you said, serious, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, I'll say burden. I can't think of the right word. Maybe you can being Mm -hmm. a caregiver. I mean, we talk yeah. about caregiving in outside of us as nurses, right? We are the caregiver of healthcare. Whereas, you know, there's a caregiver for, you know, you're being the caregiver for your mom or whatever, but we are the caregivers of healthcare, um, of the masses for a better word. And it's a heavy job. And right now, one of my jobs is I provide respite for families who have pediatric patients, right? That um, mm-hmm. have ultra special needs. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet I constantly think, okay, this is, this is great, but how are we providing respite for nurses? Because we need it as much, if not more than anyone. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the way we can fill our own bucket is through things like creativity, right? Maybe creativity is you're going out on the night with some girlfriends and go into a comedy club 
or having a paint night somewhere or going out with your husband or your partner, you know, that maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe it's cooking a meal, actually having real food <laughs> to eat. None of this vendor yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. For you sure. Know, but, but it's a matter of, it's a matter of starting to listen to ourselves. And I think I've said that before is listening to ourselves and feeling into what does make me happy? What does bring me joy? What do I like to do? And if you don't have an answer to that, that's okay. But I bet you, if you continue to ask that question, you will start paying attention. You'll start paying attention to the feelings you feel. You'll start paying attention to things around you that you're like, I love that. I really love hiking or I really love going to museums or art shows or I love old cars. You know, there's, there is no end. Like I said, it's limitless. There is no end to mm. creativity mm -hmm. and there is no end to the joys that we can feel in whatever. And it doesn't have to be one thing. It can be a million things. I often think, is it, is mine a million things because part, because I'm a Gemini, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but it brings me so much joy to try different things, to try new things. And the funny thing about that is for the most part, um, trying new things does not scare me. Although, you know, mm -hmm. that I have told you one of my fears and I've put it off for almost a year is starting mm -hmm. a Facebook group for nurses. Mm -hmm. And that surprises me that it scares me. I just think that it's such an important thing that I'm like, what if I screw it up? You know, those kinds of things, but I'm, it has not dissuaded me and it is going to happen. And it's actually in the process of happening. I only have a couple more things to put in place, but it's funny, those things that frighten me, but most of the time starting something different, trying something new does not frighten me anymore. I've done it so many times. There's a quote that talks about, Oh, what is it basically about fear? It says, you know, bring it on. I've been to hell so many times and back. Nothing can scare me anymore. And I think all of us to a point have, right? Realize that yeah. you, you have made it through everything that has come up in your life thus far, right? And really fear Sometimes that feeling of fear is just something telling you, do it, move in that direction. Unless it's about safety and fear, right? Those, that's a little bit different. But if you're nervous and you're a little scared about trying something, then maybe you ought to try it. Give it mm -hmm. a go, you know? I think a lot of it has to do with, like you were saying just now, is it's um, when um, giving ourselves permission to be okay to not do it perfectly and this is an experiment and we can try this have fun but also to give yourself permission to experience pleasure or even ask I think for nurses like you said we're so geared towards taking care of other people and that is what it means to be a nurse is to care about other people what they want what they need that is really what you do day in and day out and so you get almost into this mode of like pleasure and fun and creativity and like focusing on yourself as in like what do I want is just like it's almost selfish, it becomes this a foreign right? like kind of foreign uh, language like a foreign concept and you're just like and then it just it's always and then even when you come home a lot of nurses you know they have their kids and they have their partners and everybody else that needs to be taken care of so it's always about other people so that's actually something that's really interesting to think about is to ask yourself, yeah, what is it that I need? What is it that I want? And that should um, be like one yeah. of our first questions, right? Mm -hmm. That's why, that's why this whole thing, that's why burnout. That's why is because we have put everything outside of ourselves. All of our, our caring all goes outside of ourselves, all of that. And in for all intents and purposes, in all actuality, it needs to start here first. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we are drawing from a, from a dry well. Yeah. Honestly, if you, I heard, 
was it es- Esther Hicks, um, Abraham mm-hmm. Hicks. Mm-hmm. Um, I listened to one, it was sometime this week. And she says, I know that people say that self-care is selfish. Mm-hmm. And she says, okay, then be selfish. Because if you can't provide self-care, you can't provide anything outside of yourself either. Then you have nothing to give. You have nothing to give. And that's why we have nurses working on zero, right? They yeah. are functioning on zero, whether it means zero sleep or zero mental care or whatever. If we really want to do good by our patients, which I know that is our goal, right? Mm-hmm. We want to provide healing and help and whatever for our patients. If you really want that, self-care isn't an option. Yeah. It's an essential. No more of this, no more of this wearing a badge of honor because of self-neglect. Because there are nurses who actually wear it as badge of honor. No more. No more. This is the new world. This is the new order. It starts with us but it starts on the inside and we know we've heard it and you can believe it or not but I will tell you it's true whatever happens in here is reiterated in our external environment so if we are self if our self-care is neglect if we, if we are neglecting ourselves then it's going to happen out here there is going to be neglect not even on purpose right I'm not saying you purposefully neglect your patients or whatever, but if there's self-love, if there is self-care, it's going to show. It's going to be reiterated in the lives, in the environment that you live in on a daily basis. And I promise you that if, say, you have a family and you start giving self-care, your family will notice. Oh, so for will sure, your I think. Workers, yeah. So will your patients. So will mm-hmm. everybody. Right? Mm-hmm. We need strong, healthy nurses. But we need nurses. We do need nurses out. I Whether or not you, you know, you want to quit the profession or whatever, that doesn't matter. But we do need nurses because without nurses, who is going to care for patients? Nobody else is going to take our job. I can guarantee it. Doctors aren't going to start. They aren't going to start doing it. Administrators aren't going to take that up. We're needed in all aspects, right? Whatever realm you want to nurse, you are needed. People need care. It's an epidemic. And and also uh, people need role models. Like we, people come to us for help and support and when they're struggling with their health and your example says a lot about how you care about yourself and how you conduct your life and even your physical appearance says something about you and the state of your health, right? And so to me, it's just like, there's some congruency that comes from living what you preach and, and being in that um, space of being a role model that people can see and can feel in your energy and can see it in your face and being able to um, have that, right? So, and absolutely, I do feel nurses are, um, you know, you're there when everybody else goes home, you're there 24 uh, seven. People have a huge amount of trust for nurses uh, even more than other healthcare professionals. So that's a, a a privilege. And it is something that you have to, and it is the best thing you can do for your <laughs> patients is to honor and respect and care for yourself first. Because then you can be there in a way that is more effective. Yeah. You know, um, we look at children and children learn probably about 90% mm-hmm. by watching. Very little they learn by you telling 
I would venture a bet it's not a whole heck of a lot different with adults. Mm -hmm. They watch. I cannot even tell you when I have talked to people about nursing shortages, about the problems that exist within nursing. And these are patients. These are laymen, right? They are not other healthcare professionals, even the ones though that I've even talked to healthcare professionals, they, but those who are patients, they even say, yes, please help them because A, they're needed, but B, we want healthy nurses there for us. We see they, they, they don't have to be told they watch. You'd be surprised at how much they understand by watching, they see the stress, they see the strain. They don't want stress and strain to nurses taking care of them. I would not want a doctor operating on me that had spent the whole night drinking, you know? And I don't want a nurse that's tired. I don't want a nurse that's burned out. I don't want a nurse that doesn't recognize what's happening with me. But we need to be we need to be that example. That's one of the reasons for being a nurse, right? We we want to care for people, but we also have to emulate that care. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. 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 But creativity can can help to de-stress. I one of uh my creativity for the most part is a personal thing. So I don't necessarily use my creativity to sell. Um I use my creativity to, to heal myself. It is a self, it is self therapy. It is so therapeutic depending on what I'm even working on. Um, so I used to do a lot of woodworking, made tables, um, charcuterie boards, things like that. And anytime, you know, as a woodworker, there's a lot of sanding involved. <laughs> lots of time for self-reflection, lots of time for thought processes. And as a matter of fact, I'm just looking at my table over here, one of them that I had made. And it's one of my favorite. It's crazy. The bottom, the stand is like uh, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I love it. And I'm just like, I have come to a point where I have quit judging my wares. I have quit judging my paintings, my writings, and realizing just because they don't look like somebody else's, great. Yeah, yeah. Because if they look like somebody else's, then I'm just becoming a mimic, right? I'm just mimicking somebody else. And we started out like that anyway, when we try to learn a new thing, but eventually you find who you are in that, in that realm, who you are in your painting, whom you are in your running. You know, you can read all the books and do all the things and do all the research. And eventually I believe that creativity leads us back to ourselves. That's mm -hmm. another beautiful part of creativity because I don't paint like somebody else. I don't woodwork like somebody else. I don't, I don't do anything like anybody else. Right. Which is beautiful. It's authentic, it's unique, and it's me. Yeah. And it's letting go of the judgment and perfectionism, yeah, right? Absolutely. So that's and that's like, hard. Yeah. That's let hard. It, go. it really is. Yeah. Because that is what it means to experiment and to be a scientist and to be an artist is the willingness to try something and to fail at it sometimes, a lot of the times, and that's okay. And it there's nobody okay. that's going to, yeah, there's nobody that's going to do it in, in the way that you do it. And so it's just the willingness to give yourself that permission. Um, yeah. And sometimes yeah. failure, though, is a matter of perception. Right? I can say, oh, my gosh, that painting was an epic fail, according to maybe me. But I have found that those that I thought were epic fails were the ones that somebody else wanted. And I'm just like, oh. that kept saying to me, oh, I need to widen my lens. I need to just realize <laughs> just because I don't like it doesn't mean somebody might not, not like it. Well, I mean, you see all those uh, 
people that are masters of these artists and things, famous artists, and some of the stuff you look at and you're just like, what is that? It's just like, <laughs> it meant something to somebody, right? <laughs> Become like, you know, millions of dollars. Like, what you're is, like a you know? giraffe? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, no, that's, I agree. Just let, let yourself, give yourself permission to just be who you are and Absolutely. yeah, experiment a little. So question for you, Nezareth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What have you, what have you wanted to try? Well, actually um, I was talking to someone like this past week about art therapy. So mm -hmm. I think that would be cool because I don't even know what it means necessarily, but it sounds kind of fun. And they explained to me what it was. And I was just like, Oh, I think I would Did like to try heard that. I mean, I have heard of it in terms of like the, with kids sort of, I oh. didn't really realize that it was something that you can do with adults as well. And it can go into, for example, I am into, um, I love dreams, like, you know, the dreams that you see at night, kind of the interpretation of dreams. I also am very much into kind of symbolism and things like that. But you could also draw things, you know, or talk about Absolutely. things in a way that relates to uh, the natural environment. There's so many different ways, apparently, to do art therapy. But it's like, that's interesting. Like, it's not the usual, like, talk therapy. But yeah. So I, I find that really fascinating that there's different ways to do things and creativity and art can be expressed in many different ways. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, that is oh, something I would love to try. Do it. Yeah. 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 Just say, okay. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's look into that. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why not? Because, you know, there are three different ways that we learn. Mm -hmm. visual auditory and tactile and anytime yeah. we can connect all of those mm -hmm. we learn more and so even when we're talking about therapy we can learn more about ourselves if we're using those properties right so regular traditional therapy is very much auditory right yeah. you're listening um and the funny thing is, is auditorial wise, that mm -hmm. is the least, that is the way that the least amount of people learn is through sound. Mm -hmm. So most people learn visually and then tactile and then sound. So if we are using um, art as therapy, you can actually connect all of those dots right? Yeah. Because there's a visual representation. And yeah. if we're talking and drawing, you can connect all three. That's what I find fascinating about it. Right? <laughs> that is kind of, yeah. and it kind of forces you to think outside of the box in terms of like, oh, now I have to kind of use my imagination a little bit in how I could express something in one way, or like whatever is in my mind, I have to kind of put it outside of myself in a kind of the expression of it or create something so it is actually I think it would be a good one for nurses you know yeah. explore yeah. art therapy because it's going to make you kind of go outside of yourself a little bit and like put whatever is inside of you like in in a different way but like it's about you on some medium yeah some sort of a medium so that's even it could be writing or it could be drawing or painting Absolutely. or whatever it is. Oh, so yeah. I just find I just find that kind of thing could be something helpful. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you and I'm guessing that you do, but I could be wrong because you are a writer. Mm -hmm. uh, I journal like every yeah. day I journal um, everything that I'm feeling goes on that paper. And I would have to say that that is some of the best therapy in the world. Once I can write it out, it usually is something I can let go or I can see more clearly, right? I have clarity on it, um, which I feel notebooks 
full of journaling. Um, there is, there is a, like how to become more creative. I can't remember the name of the book, but it has you journaling every day. Is it uh, the artist's way by Julia Cameron? Yes. The artist's way. I just could not remember. Yes, I have that. Yeah. All right. I was actually thinking about that throughout this talk because like it was in the background because that is one uh, that I love. It's, like she talks about the amazing. morning pages. Yeah. Yep, the morning pages and it yeah. that I think is honestly some of the best part of that I haven't I didn't finish it I ended up moving and then got sidetracked and I couldn't find where I'd put my workbook but I think it's something that you can um, work on at different points in time right and um, if you need a spark of creativity get that workbook. You don't need, you don't need the book and the workbook from what I understand. I just mm -hmm. was going through the workbook and it is, it's amazing. Um, it really is amazing. I have solved so many problems by writing them down or let go of so many things by writing them down. I'll be frustrated with a, a topic or frustrated with even somebody, right? And I'll start writing it out and I will realize the error sometimes it's my thought process that's the error sometimes it's my judgment that's the error sometimes you know what I mean and mm -hmm. it just adds a level of clarity like mm -hmm. I can't get anywhere else so every morning I journal and that's often where I'll get um like inspiration is through my writing I'll be like oh because even so I told you I'd had a podcast and I stopped it last September and um, I've kind of received, I've received a, another feeling that in the near future it will be restarted, but it will have a different view on it. Um, it will change. It'll be the same, same title, but it will change. And so, I mean, just that came to me just this morning. Mm hmm. Um, mm hmm. You know, and that's where yeah. I've received titles for certain books that I've written and that kind of thing. So, so yeah. Um, and I believe you can, it can spark creativity, but it can be creative in its own right. Oh, for sure. And I think the act of reading and writing is one of the best mindfulness exercises that you can do because it forces you to focus on doing one thing where we become sort of a culture that is kind of perpetually distracted and we multitask and which I cannot do to save my life. Uh, it's a farce. You do know that. Yeah, reading, <laughs> reading and writing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, forces you to just do that one thing at a time, but it's also forces you to go into introspection and which is kind of, which it's is a lost meditation. art. Yeah, it's on meditation. So, um, but yeah, for sure. I will put a link um, in the description for uh, Julia Cameron's uh, book Thank because you. that is a fantastic resource. Oh, so and good. Uh, yeah, so good. you will not be sad. If you get that workbook, you will not be sad if you actually get it and do it. It, it can change your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think this is pretty good. Um, is there anything else that you want to share? Because I think we covered a lot of grounds and there's some good tips in here. Yeah. I just hope that you start listening to yourself. Start asking yourself those questions. What lights me up? What feeds my soul? You know, what makes me happy? Um, that was funny. I just, just in saying that, <laughs> what came to me is the color yellow. I don't know why, because I've never, like, I don't wear yellow. <laughs> I, I look like, Blech. I look like vomit in yellow but um yellow I use yellow in so much in so many of my paintings um in my drawings you know that sort of a thing generally represented as sunshine so light in some way mm -hmm. and yet also when I'm out hiking the sunshine you know um oh that just talking and stuff today it makes me want to go out and touch nature so mm. yeah find your niche find your niche of creativity and then when it changes find another niche 
Yeah. You know, oh, for sure. Be in yeah. green for however long you want and make it whatever you want. And then if you want to include your kids with that too, but if it wants to, if you want it to be a solo activity, it can be a solo activity, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. There is no limit. There is no rules. That's what we need to remember. We as nurses tend to be rule keepers, rule, you know, we live within those lines. I think that's where we really need help is to do other things outside the lines or to get rid of the lines, to diminish yeah. the lines. So soften them at least. Yeah, so, yes, sure. thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. It was so much fun. Absolutely. And uh, the next three episodes, um, we're going to be talking about breath work uh, in the next one. And then after that, we'll be talking about rest and sort of renewal and balance. And then the last one is going to be on self-compassion. So um, please share this information with those who benefit maybe so, um, on your social media and also comment below. And tell us what you think about creativity, kind of what helps you uh, explore that, what you love to do, uh, or the things yes. that you want to try. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. And until That's next time, yeah, bye for now. <laughs>